Hi guys, welcome back to our Dofus Let's Play. Today on episode 5 we'll be taking on the Bustache dungeon and also be going more into the dungeon quest line itself. If you did miss last episode please go check it out as we did a massive upgrade on our current set. We made a few items and overall I think we're pretty much ready to take on uh, all of the level 1 to 50 dungeons. So yeah, let's get straight into it. So the Bustas dungeon is located in the Trull Fair, which is just north, um, northwest, I believe, of Astrib, as you can see just up here in the corner. Now there is a quicker way to get there, which I will uh, show you now. So obviously when you do get to this dungeon, it is a level 50 dungeon. So the game is expecting you to be at least level 50 to get there. We are currently level 60, which means we have the access to mounts. As you can see here. Now I do have a global pre-sentinent potion which is used on mounts and these are really useful for basically traveling around the world of 12 um, as you can just click on the map and it will literally just run you there the quickest route possible. Also I have a few of the temple of scriptures potions. This is a quest which I would definitely recommend starting as soon as you have access to uh, Astrub. Um, these potions are relatively cheap, so all you need to do is buy just the one potion um, to get here. You don't even have to buy it, I just think it's a lot easier. Because there is a zap literally two maps away. Now what this quest is, it's a 365 day quest. Every single day, it'll be a different item that is required to, for you to bring. And most of the time, well they used to be, um, the items used to be sold outside but it looks as though they're not sold here anymore. So what I'd recommend doing is getting the zap first, um, traveling to whichever city you can go to. So for instance, if we was to go to, what level is that? Uh, level 50, okay. So if we was to go to Astrib, let's say you've just got Astrib, so that's this, this is completely fine. We need to go to the resource market, which is just located there. Utilizing a pre-sentent pot potion, on our mount means if we CTRL and click on a map, I think it's CTRL, let me just double check. Yes it is, yeah. So left control and just click anywhere on the map, it will basically just teleport you there um, without you clicking, which is really nice. So we need coconuts. Coconuts. Yeah, so there we go. Just get two of those. They're 99 karmas each. And then we press H in the haven bag and we go straight back to the zap, which is this one here. Now this quest, very worth doing. After doing it 365 times, um, so a very consistent amount, you will get a Dofus from it, which is a Dolmanax. And Dolmanax gives you 50 in each uh, stat, which can be quite useful in certain builds. So definitely worth getting. So we need to click on the altar and then talk to the designated sprite. Uh, very easy, just a bit of dialogue. As you can see, pretty much, you know, quite a large proportion of players do this daily because essentially it is a free quest. Uh, we get some really good XP, so 600,000 XP just from doing that quest, and we got more karmas than we actually spent, so it can be a good little money maker. Um, and the other side of it is if you press X on your keyboard, it will show you the bonus, de bonus of the day. So, for instance, the bonus of the day today is the chance of obtaining loot from creatures in the Palmicoco and Moon Turtle families are increased by 75%. And the item that we actually provided um, this guy with was an item that is designated to them mobs. So if you wanted to you know, go full hardcore mode, you could go farm the mobs, get the loot, come back, etc. Um, really nice and useful mechanic they added a few years ago, uh, several years ago now actually. But I really do think it's a it's a nice way to make sure that you get logged in every single day to uh, make sure this quest is done. Even if you're not, you know, playing the game for a number of hours, um, just coming online, spending literally less than five minutes to get that quest done, definitely worth doing. Um, I myself has n have never actually done it because I'm very inconsistent, but my aim is to do it consistently and. Yeah, I think it's a really good quest, so definitely get it done if you can. So as you can see here, we're utilising the pre-sentinent. I'm not clicking anything. It's just 
transport me there. Um, the good thing about this as well is it kind of takes into account loading zones. So if your PC is a bit slower, just right click the screen, go on flash quality and turn it to low. Um, this will just make the maps sort of generate a bit faster. So it means traveling like this is going to be a, a, a teensy bit faster as well. So definitely get that sorted. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, thoroughly enjoying playing this character. It's very chilled. It's not like, um, you know, I'm forcefully playing it because of the the series i feel like i'm getting su i'm getting such an enjoyment out of it and such a relief um, of just taking a seat back and relaxing and i hope you guys are enjoying it too okay so now we're in the troll fair which is a very cool little place there's a few weird npcs here okay so we shouldn't have too much hassle with the boost dash dungeon um, okay, so we need to talk to this chafer, and then we'll use the bunch of keys. And we're going to try to do every single challenge in these. Now, we don't need our mount, so we're going to switch back over to our pet. Okay, so, elitist, all attacks on the evil tofu. We should get level 64 during this quest, uh, during this dungeon as well, which is going to be really nice for us, because that gives us access to one of our bread and butter spells, which is called Noah. Okay, we can't do anything there. <clears throat> but yeah, Noah in situations like this, the spell, is going to be really useful. I think we get it at level 65. Oopsies. Okay, let's kill that one. Um, okay, so we get some little drops from these as well. Don't think any of these drops are worth literally anything, yeah. But it's the achievements we're after. So the big achievement in these dungeons is basically doing one challenge at least against mobs that are higher than you. So all these mobs, are, you know, the level does equate to a higher level than me, so we do want to do as many challenges as possible. Okay, let's just jump over this one. Now this guy is the one you need to watch out for, as I believe he can one-shot kill. I don't know how his mechanic works though, unfortunately. But because we're pushed back, we should be dealing a decent amount of damage. Yeah, nice. Okay, so pretty uh, pretty easy at the moment. We've not really lost too much health. And that's both challenges. Ooh, we have got a 73% experience and loot bonus in this area as well. So that's really useful. Means we'll just get a bit more extra XP. So versatile and focus, okay. We can do this one. I'm going to turn back on the sounds as well, just for the menu and background sounds. Nice. I'm getting real. I'm getting the hang of this character every single day, like even better, which is nice. There is obviously a few spells which I still want to get used to, 
Okay, so what's this? Kill the Gargoyle first. And Blitzkrieg, wow. I think we just do Blitzkrieg, personally. Oh, so pushback damage affects it. Okay. That never used to be the case. Well, the more you know. I was debating whether to make a second character. Because um, we've got a few karmas. Six mil. And this character is pretty set now until... Well, probably for quite a while. So I was thinking of making a second character. Getting it to where this one is. And kind of having like a little duo team. Um... Now what that does for us is obviously opens up a, a crazy amount of content because it gives us access to the um, to harder dungeons essentially. Um, obviously the downside to that is we would need twice the amount of money. Um, but I think 6 mil is actually enough to, to do that. Um, if you guys think that's, that's a good idea then obviously just let me know and give me a suggestion as to what class you think would complement the Forge Lance quite well. Um, quite a, quite a good damage dealer, I would say. So I don't know whether a support class is probably the way to go uh, with the damage dealer, or maybe even another damage dealer like a Sacria. But yeah, I wouldn't have any qualms in sort of creating a second character, getting it to where this one is, and just going through the game as a duo. But maybe that's just me. I feel like our little Vazric is getting kind of lonely. Okay, so achievements in the Boostash dungeon. This is what we need to look for quickly. Boostash. <coughs> right, so we've got Hermit. And we've got Last. So, we'll focus on the Gargoyle first. We can't do Hermit because there's only one of us. This is what I mean. Like, with a duo, we'd be able to do this, uh, do this quest. Uh, do this achievement, sorry. Yeah, we'll make sure we'll do... Wait, can we not do Hermit? I don't know why it's not shown up. I forgot what Hermit is. I think it's... A hermit. What is Hermit? Ah, it doesn't show me. Either. Oh, never finish... Oh, adjacent to an ally. That's why we can't do it, because we have no allies. I could use a sidekick. I've just realised that. That might have been a good option. Okay, so Boostash is an interesting one because he can't, you, I don't think you can push him back. So this is actually going to be quite difficult for us. Um, but I still think we'll be able to do it. And he summons, so basically he summons back the monsters you've killed. So for instance, I've just killed the Gago and the Vampire. So if I was to kill them again, it's there's no point because he's already killed them. So I need to really focus on killing the Quone now, which we will do. So let's shield up. Um, I guess we just need to run. We need to get this Quone out. There we go. So we should be able to kill this one this turn. The Gargoyle... Oh, bollocks. Actually, no, it should be fine. Yeah, as you can see, the damage we do is awful. That is that is so low. Um, damn. What about this one? Yeah, oh my god. It's going to be a long fight. I did not even think about his resistance. He's got 85% air resistance. Um... And he gives us erosion, and he hits quite hard as well, so, oh. This might be quite annoying. Okay. What about our crow blade? That hits neutral. No, that's not good. Um, slingshot? Nope. Yeah, all of our spells are going to hit awful, apart from agility, because we've got the Mad Tofu cloak on. Okay, what I'm going to do is leave. Um, I'll get a sidekick. And we'll just come back here quickly. Hopefully sidekicks actually uh, work with the... What you call it? 
the achievements. I'm not sure if they do, but they are counted as an ally, so I would expect they do. Okay, let's have a look. Sidekick, sidekick. We've got Trank. We can't equip. The only one we can equip is Lumino, I think. Yeah. Oh, we can do Beezlebug, actually. Beezlebug's nice. So Beezlebug hits in fire, which means we should be able to deal some damage. Okay, let's, let's just go back there. Uh, while we're doing that, I'm trying to think of some upgrades we could do for, you know, the next few levels. Now, I'm thinking next upgrade would be around level 80, where we would swap out a few of these items. But currently, I think the items we've got are actually pretty good. Um, we'd swap out the amulet, obviously, when we can get a better one. This set, I didn't even realise, is a really good set for this build. Four pushback damage. 15 agility plus 20 vitality for two items is actually really really good the belt also giving 10 so combined bonus you know i believe that's what 14 pushback damage 69 agility uh, for a two set bonus at this level that is really nice obviously we have overmaged vitality but if you wanted to overmage for the agility you could whack on an extra 30 agility so you could have like two items with 99 but yeah that's really good. The reason we don't have free items is because once we go past two, we're not able to equip some of these trophies, such as the Air Devastator and the Stunter. Uh, as you can see, conditions set bonus less than two. So that's why we only have two items of a set on. This becomes more apparent when you get to level 100 and you can equip a uh, Nomad and a Shaker. But once you get to Nomad and Shaker, you can either go you know, full set build, or you can go sort of the Nomad Shaker build, which a lot of people do go. They think it is a bit stronger, personally. But yeah, Nomad gives one, M one MP. And the Shaker gives one AP. But again, might, you need the two set bonus. So you can't equip a full set, such as Bwok Chief set, for instance. You have to kind of, you know, look around and mould your set. <coughs> anyway, enough waffling on. We are here now, so let's go back into the dungeon. And let's just heal. Oh, we don't have any. Let's just sit down for a bit. Well, this this guy looks like he's got a full team. Any Zella, Kra, Enu. Interesting team. So we get 116,000 XP from this. We're level 62 with 680,000 to level up. From doing the quest, we get 1.2 million. And for the achievements, if we manage to do all the achievements in one fight, yeah, we get 500 for each one. Um, and then 1 million for duo. So I'm really hoping the duo does work with a sidekick. Let's see. Yes, it does. Okay, brilliant stuff. That's really good news for us. But we go second now, which is meh. So we can't do ally, and we have to kill him last. Okay, so let's remember that. And we got really unlucky because the gargoyle has got air resistance. Not to worry. Okay, I haven't used Beezlebug in a long time, and he's actually going to die already. Shit. What's this do? Okay, I don't know what that does, but yeah. Inflicts fire damage in a cross shape. Okay, that's good. We can use that. We've got minus 96 MP. Oh, God, no. Right, we need him to survive one more round, and we should be okay. But, yeah, okay, that's good, that's good. No, it's not. Oh my god, this is this is grueling. I thought it was going to be easy. Um, okay, so let's shield both of us up. 
Let's jump over here. Let's kill this clone. Okay, nice. What does this do? Scoria. Places a trap that poisons targets and places them in a scorified state. Steals two range. Pushes. Ooh. This steals MP. Okay. Let's put down one of these traps. Let's use that. Oh, no way that counts as an ally. Right, no. Round three. <sighs> that is, I did not know that that would count as an ally. Wow, that's so annoying. Oh, God. Okay, I've got no food, so we need to, um, unless there's some in the haven bag. Aha, there is. Always come prepared. Yeah, what upgrades have we got? Level 80. I've got a really nice chance set as well, which I will try. So this is a set I maged not too long ago, actually. It's a Crocodile Chief set. As you can see, it is, pre it is honestly really nicely maged, I must say. Um, it gives everything it needs to give. I think the only thing it isn't maged is the sword, because I couldn't mage it. But yeah, as you can see, like perfect agility, perfect crit, perfect res. Um, this one again, perfect. It gives six air damage. The belt gives six water damage. It's a really nice set, so I'm looking forward to using that. Okay, so let's heal up. Right, let's um, let's do this a bit differently. Because we start second, we don't want to be too close to the ghost, because he's just going to eliminate all of our MP. So we'll move Beezlebug here. Okay, this guy has a lot of MP, but we're first now for some reason. Oh, it's because we weren't fully healed, isn't it? Right. Let's do this properly. Let's concentrate. Okay, if we can use all MP as well, that would be brilliant. Okay, this is good. Let's put some traps down. Ah, so because it's an ally, the AI must think it's an it's 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 an ally as well. So that means that they're basically when it's a summon, for instance, and they have it, and the AI has an option to hit a um, what's it called, a player or a summon, they'll most more than likely hit the player. But because it, I don't know why the lance is counted as an ally, which I guess is good. Um, but because it is counted as an ally, it means that more than likely the AI would go for that rather than me. If that kind of makes sense, I know it, it doesn't, but let's see. Okay, let's put down some traps here. We've killed the vampire. We just need to kill the clone. So let's keep Beezlebug far away. Right, so what we need to do now is jump over and kill the clone. Oh, that was so bad. That's fine, use all MP. Oh no. Oh, he pushed us away. That's really good. I think we just start dealing some damage on Boostash, get it, get it a bit low. Quone's got 2 HP, so Quone's dead this turn. Okay, we failed one challenge, but I'm not really too bothered about that challenge at all. Um, we will activate our trap, which is meh. We've got shield as well, so let's just put our lance here to block line of sight. And then we will end. Okay, so we've killed every single monster now, so what we need to do is really focus on... Boostash. How much damage does that do? That does pretty good damage, actually. Let's see, uh, four. <laughs> I 
It's a shame we can't push him back, otherwise this would be over in a turn. Okay, we need to be careful here, so we're gonna... Ah, shit. I messed up. I need to be two cells up now. Okay. I was gonna try shield. Okay, let's just let's just go all in. We need to really kill this kill this guy. So yeah, we did what about fifty damage. Uh... Oh no. Okay, that's good. That's good damage. Um, let's move here. <laughs> if we need to kill the gargoyle, we can. Quite easily. Um, I think we're just going to have to go full hit. Ooh, wait. If we put, is there a way of us to put in a lance here? Aha, there is. I just don't want the boost dash to go for Beazle. So I'm trying to block him, but yeah, he's going to go for it anyway. Okay. Um, retreat two cells. That's fine. Okay, I think our Beazel is dead, but we managed to get off quite a lot of damage. So we should be okay for now. I don't think Boost Dash can heal. Oh, wow, we got one HP. That doesn't matter, though. Okay, what we're going to do is do a, a run away here. Get some health back. Beazle's dead. I've accepted that fate. He did good. He did good. These guys are going to reduce our MP by 100. So, we do need to kill these guys. Okay, so there's no way he's healing, which is good. Um, if we kill him, do we get our MP back? Yes, we do. That's good to know. Okay. Um, this guy can't be pushed back for some reason. That's fine. We just need to create some distance. Now he's summoning back every single turn. So we need to be wary of that. Okay, we need to get some damage off. Otherwise, this will go on forever. Um, duck crit. Okay, nice. We lost 2 AP. Why did we lose 2 AP? Boost Ash. Oh, God. Okay, so what we need to do here is block line of sight. So now Boost Ash has to come around. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Okay, we've got the enemies here. This is good for us because we don't... We don't want to kill these guys now because they just spawn around the ghost. So keeping them there is actually really good for us. Okay, let's bring our lance back. Let's hit him twice and let's do a big run away here. I think we can go here safely. And we need to do this within 20 turns. This is going to be really close. OK, 
Okay, so we can kill you. And we can hit twice. That's 40 damage per turn. We can get 60 damage as well. So 40 damage per turn, 10 turns is 400. So he should be on track to do it. However, he's getting closer now. So we do need to we need to bring out the damage. Um, he's gonna be he's gonna hit us either way this turn. So I think just using all MP this turn is the way to go. Ah, bastard! Actually, this is fine. This is fine. If we kill this one, we get our MP back. Like so. And then we can just get a tiny heal, but also deal some damage and create some gap. Okay, six turns. This is intense. I'm not going to lie. This is intense. Okay, we can get three hits off here. So that's 60 damage, I think. God, we're getting low. Oh, no, it's not 60 damage. That's fine. 40 damage will have to do. He can't come near us again. Okay, okay. Five turns. Right, these guys are close now, so we need to think about where we're going. Uh, we can do 60 damage this turn, so let's do it. 68 left. Okay, okay, this is it. Okay, this is alright, this is alright. I'm happy with that. Oh my god. I have got silver as well, so I'm not really too bothered about getting low. I just need to keep doing damage. Right, he's going to hit us here and probably summon a ghost, I'm not sure. Ah, uh, he heals on pushback. Shit. Okay, I need to think about this. So we need to end where he can't push us back, basically. Let's get some heal. Now, if I was to go here, he can't push me back here. Oh, no, we've got two turds. <laughs> Come on, don't lose AP. If I lose AP now, I think it's over. Okay. And if we end here... No, here. Oh, is it within 20 turns? Less than... That is so annoying. That is so annoying. Oh, fuck. Oh, that is really annoying. Because we did it in exactly 20. Right, let's use our MP just to be safe. Um, damn it. Wow. Wow. Uh, however, we got yeah, we got a few achievements. Huh? God, that's so ah, I'm so annoyed. Right, it just means if we were to create a second character, we got to come back and do this as a duo. So positives, you know, silver linings. Okay, let's go back to Belina Fum using our trusty pre sentinel. How much XP do we get for this? Ooh. Okay, I think we need to do this one as well, this quest, which is very close to Bellina. So we'll do that just to get a bit of extra XP. And we might be pushing 65 here. Now, being level 65 means that we actually want 10 AP. And the reason being is because Noah costs 4 AP. Now, I will show you guys what Noah does when I do unlock it. But the reason I keep going on about it is because it is a brilliant, brilliant move. Oh, wow. There we go. 65. And we unlocked the Quackwa dungeon. Which is really good because that's a pushback dungeon. Okay, so Noah. Why did I want this spell so bad? It's basically for PVM, this spell is crazy, crazy strong. And I'll show you how it works right now. So it doesn't... It just hits in a massive AoE, basically. But it hits in an AoE from your lance and from yourself. 
so it can hit two times the amount of damage if you were to line it up correctly. And I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to use the we're going to use the mount here just so we get 10 AP. Obviously, we lose a few stats. Okay, so first, as you can see here, it's not a, it, we aren't able to use it because it requires us to be disarmed, which means we need to throw out our lands. So when we throw our lands out, we have this AOE here. And when we click our lands, as you can see, it's going to give us a little preview of what's going to happen. So if we were to press this, we would hit you know that amount of damage. However, the amazing thing about this spell is rather than the damage being accumulated from the Lance's AoE, if we were to get our character in the same AoE, it would hit double the amount. As you can see, so it gives double the amount of damage there. So real, it is a really good spell for using at the you know at the start of a turn, at the end of a turn. So if you position correctly, so as you can see there, at the end of a turn, I threw my lance out, I pushed the enemy back. I've got ten AP now, which means I can go in, use Noah, get a reposition, and then I can also go for you know two more javelins if I if I need to, or you know, even better, I can go for a heroic charge. Um, so yeah, really, really nice spell for us to have. So I'm quite looking forward to using that. I know I just completely ignored this quest, didn't I? But I really want to do this dungeon. I think we can do this dungeon in this episode. We're only 36 minutes in, so I'm more than happy to do that. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve as well. So we have got a Shram, <laughs> a Shram Doppel Teleport. Which I will happily use here. Just gets us a bit closer to the um, village zap. I guess we can do a doppel as well. So doppels, if you guys aren't familiar with them, there are, I believe, 14, 15 classes now. I'm not even, I don't even know. So there's a lot of, cl every single class has a doppel and a class temple. And a doppel is essentially your character um, shrunken down into this tiny little character and it has all the spells you do it scales off your level so I believe it's in chunks of 20 and yeah for, for defeating the doppels you get rewarded and you can only do this once per day and with these rewards you get doppelunes doppelunes can be used to purchase scrolls and these scrolls as you saw in the last video can be used to level up your characteristics which is really really useful or you can sell them up to you so, as you can see here, the first quest we get is fight each doppel. That's basically us accepting that we're going to fight every single doppel. Which we're not going to do uh, today, because it takes forever. But we will do just this one. And, yeah, you want to make sure you do all challenges in the doppel fights. So, Nomad, use all MP. And then we need to end close. I think this counts. Yeah. Sweet. So we, as you can see here, we got an achievement for Shram Doppel. And that is because we defeated the Shram Doppel. And if we scroll down on Doppel, as you can see, defeat complete five challenges against XYZ Doppel. So if we go down to Shram, there it is. It will show on a little taskbar. We've done two out of five. And yeah, for doing all of them, you get a nice chunky amount of XP. Uh, you get an ornament. And also you get the Doppelunes, which can be used to purchase goodies. So definitely worth doing if you've got a bit of spare time. Again, one of them little daily tasks for if you have got a spare few 30 minutes, I'd say. If you've got the correct way to travel around. Yeah, 30 minutes, I'd say. Okay, so we're going to get this zap here, just so we don't have to keep running back. And we're going to use our pre-sentinent again to travel ourselves up to the Quakwa's Nest. Now, some interesting things to point out about the Quakwa Dungeon is there are four different elements of bird in this dungeon. Your Strength one, your Agility one, your Intelligence one, and your Chance one. Now, each floor is associated to one of those types, and it has a Guardian within that uh, floor. That is the only place in the entire game you can find that guardian. 
Now to do the achievement correctly, which is to um, defeat every single variant of a Quaqua by completing a challenge, you need to make sure that you do this during the fight. So what I always try to do is just make sure that when I go into these dungeons, I'm very well aware that I need to do the challenge. So this is the monster here, the Ice Quack Quack Work Quacker. Um, so yeah, I need to make sure you do them. As you can see, the resistance is quite annoying. So if you do come in and you are one element like myself, this can be quite tedious. So it is good to have a, another element or as you can see here, we have our sidekicks we can use. So I'm going to be using um, probably Beazle Bug again. So the chance ones are going to be weak to fire. The earth ones are going to be weak to air. The fire ones are going to be weak to water. And the air ones are going to be weak to earth. So yeah, I have a challenge here. So we need to kill the ice quack while last. We're not going to do statue because that's going to take us a lifetime. Do, do, do. Yeah, as you can see, the damage you deal is pretty significant because of their resistances. Um, you know, this I was hitting what sixties and stuff with uh, with this guy before. Okay, so this is where uh, Noah comes in clutch. As you can see, the damage preview here. So it's teleporting me and it's doing damage around me. I, I love this spell. I think it's such a good spell. And we will end here. Okay, so let's kill this guy if we can. How dare you. There we go. So that should be one challenge done. Oh! We didn't kill it! No! I, f I was so confident! Oh, God. That's embarrassing. These guys do hit quite a lot. You know, they did manage to chunk me off quite a bit. Okay, so this is the annoying one for me, which is the air one. Uh, obviously because I am not, I am pure air. So I'm thinking whether to take this off for now. Um, this is intelligence. Yeah, we could go intelligence for this fight. Oh, we can go 12. <laughs> what the hell? We're 12 and 6. What the hell? That's that's crazy. Okay, well, let's go intelligence this fight. Um, we won't deal literally any damage whatsoever, but... Oh, we've got Kawa as well. Um, what else is there? This one. Okay, screw it. Let's go. Oh, wow. Okay, we've got last. This is good. Blitzkrieg is annoying. We're not able to do Blitzkrieg. Alright, let's um, shield up. To be fair, decent damage. Do do do. I think we just have to end here. failed Blitzkrieg. Okay, let's 
just move this here. Um, we need to withdraw the lands. Oh god, I don't like this. Okay, we're going to get absolutely battered this fight, but that's fine. Let's put another trap down here. I, I do like the animations of these spells, and they probably are strong if you were to go full element, but yeah, I'm not strong at all. Okay, I think we can kill this one. Scarander in one turn. Is that poison? I think we beasle but poisons, I think. <laughs> okay, if we go here we can push back. Nice. Okay, so that was probably the hardest hardest one for us to do. This one, phew, piece of piss. Let's change back to our regular set. Was fun for a while. Eleven and six. Hmm. I would go eleven and six, but I don't think we need to, in all fairness. Let's swap these out quick quickly. Where is it? That one. Uh, let's get rid of this one as well and swap it for that one. So that's more air damage. Okay, okay. I'm happy with that. I'm pretty confident we can do this with the amount of HP we have. This should be very easy. Elementary, my dear. Okay, so I think we just let Beazle die. And we just focus on agility. So if we go up here, for instance, and use Noah. Crazy damage. I think we just pass, yeah. Just pass with this guy. Could Might be, might be able to do versatile too. Okay, never mind. I didn't I wasn't even thinking. Right, that one's uh that one was pretty easy. So the final one is the fire one, which again we don't need to change for. Um 189,000 XP. I'm thinking whether to because I have no food on me, so I don't know whether it was worth waiting. Oh god, we need to do statue. No. I hate statue. Especially because we push ourselves back so much. Um, I guess I'll do. And Beazle can't do anything this fight, I've just, I've just realised. Cuticle of Terror. Well, to be fair, Noah, Noah's going to come in here. Nice. 
nice dice. Let's put another javelin down, just for next turn. Okay, this is good. So we've got a good Noah here. Um, oh, where did I end? I think it was there. Yeah, okay. I need to be careful with statue. I always manage to fail it. Um, if we move here, we can kill this one. Okay, so we just need to kill this guy now. Which is going to be the hard part, because he just runs away. All we need him to do is come close. Look, oh no, this is not going to work, is it? Shit. What if we try to do that? Can I push myself back? Pushes back one cell. Oh my god, look. Oh, it deals so much damage, though. That's not worth it. Well, that works. Okay, okay, this is good. So we push, withdraw, run back. Okay, this is good. That is really good, actually. Okay, we don't want to kill. can't do any damage with fire. That's the issue. Like, I can't. He's going he's gonna to run away as well. Um. Oh, there we go. I think that's the answer. Collapse. So I think collapse pulls in. Pulls, pulls in. It does. Okay. So we pull in. Like, we could finish it off right now, but... I can't. <laughs> okay, where's he going to go now? That's perfect. That's perfect. Oof. So that should be the fight done. This is why I hate statue. And there we go. So that's the um, that's the quest. That's the achievement I wanted to get. This is why I suggest doing it. So fully fledged. That is the quest. Um, that's for doing quackers, blacks, and quacks. And as you can see, you get a crazy amount of XP. So it's these three here, and these quackers are only going to be found in this dungeon. But for doing all them, we get a nice big chunk of XP, and we also get the a bit renowned, which is for hitting 500 uh, achievements. So yeah, we did level up, which is lovely. Put some into vitality. And here we are on the boss of the Quark Dungeon. So the, bo the boss is uh, quite an interesting one. I think we want to go... Lumino? Yeah, Lumino. Maybe. I would go the other one. But I don't have it with me. So yeah, the boss is very interesting. Randomly, it will give itself minus 50 resistance to a certain element. And it's a 1 in 5 chance. Now, basically, we want it to be air for obvious reasons. But uh, I don't think it will be. Anyway, let's go. The achievements for this one are very annoying. I think one of them is to kill with indirect damage. Okay. What did we get? We got Earth. 
That is so annoying. And we've got, yeah, that is zombie. So zombie, we can only use one MP. And we can only do indirect damage. Now, I don't know if this is indirect or not. Let's try it. No, it's not. Okay, I think we're going to struggle with that then. Because I don't have a release. Um, right. This will take two minutes. First things first. Let's get this zap. Just so we don't have to run back. <clears throat> Apologies, I've just had a little a little think. And I feel as though we can do it. Okay, but we've got the zap, we've got the zap. Alright, let's go to uh, Bonta. And we'll go to the consumable market. Why are we going to the consumable market, Callum? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe it's because we want to buy a spell. What spell? Release. We need release. Release deals pushback damage. Yeah, it's really cheap as well, actually. How much is Chafer? Oh, I'm not buying that. I'll just get it. But with this spell, I think we typically want to be using our pet, obviously, for 71 pushback damage. Also, I think in our bank we have a sidekick, which deals pushback damage too. Yes, we do. Oh, you need... 999 achievement points. Really? So I can't use it? No. Sugar. Oh well. Let's go Haven Bag. Let's get our bread out so we don't have to wait around for healing. Uh, Crackler Mountain. And then let's just... Go back there. So yeah, the idea was get released because that's going to be a really nice source of power in this dungeon. Um, if you're an Oza or you have some sort of indirect damage in your spell set, that's brilliant. This dungeon's very easy for you. But when you, to be fair, I do have a lot of pushback damage, so it should be fine. But I just wanted to be sure. Okay, let's uh, heal. And let's do this. Let's do this. Um, let's class this as first time. So we need to put the pet back on. And we'll start down here. We'll kill the uh, the hardest one first, which is the air one. Okay, we've got release now, which is nice. Okay, so we're going to push back, move one cell. We're going to push back again. And we're going to release. So release, as you can see, 146 damage when it's one cell. Which is very nice. Nomad should be relatively easy for us because we are agility. So we've got a lot of dodge. Uh, we'll use screen. I think... I think I have a... This has a... Uh, what do you call it? Pushback spell, but I'm not sure. Let's just make sure we are fully healed. So let's just use our Lumino for healing, if we can. He's not got much HP, but he should keep us alive relatively long. Oh, wow, we got agility. That's really lucky. Um, push back. Ah, this is not going to kill, is it? Hmm. Okay, we need to use one MP. Wow, you need to go away. Oh, wow. That's a big pushback. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, we can't kill the wind quack now, but... We might be able... To... oh no. Oh no, <laughs> Lumino, it's taking so much damage. Ooh, Lumino gains 165 health. Let's do it. And then, let's hit this guy. And we need to move. I guess this is good, in a way. Because we're able to lower a lot of the quarks down. Okay, do we kill? No. Um. We need to get like in down there somewhere. Okay, let's utilize our javelin for next turn if it stays alive because we can know it to the javelin oh but that kills the quack i think we might have to give up on clean hands for now because we're losing a lot of hp and this guy's just summoning quackers which is reducing my agility which means i'm hitting literally nothing oh, i think we're a bit too weak for this dungeon unfortunately yeah, look at the damage. It's so little. Yeah, I don't think we're able to do this one, unfortunately. Um, it's a shame. Oh, we got a silver. But yeah, look at our damage now. That's just from pushback. <laughs> wow, our luck just doesn't end. Or it doesn't even start, I should say. I don't even know why I'm still trying. We're definitely losing. <laughs> Mama didn't raise no quitter. Um... Yeah, we need like a strength character with us. Okay, GG. Uh, well, at least we give it a, tr a try. Uh, and we are in the final room now. So whenever we come back to this dungeon, we're able to just transport to the final room and continue it from there. It's a shame I wanted to get level 70 in this one. But unfortunately, because we aren't able to do that dungeon yet, we weren't able to. So, yeah, I'll end it off here, guys, for the next episode what i'm hoping to do is get to level 70 and level 70 will give us access to the crocodile oh god the crocodile chief set which we do have and this set is really nice it gives us a good variance of resistances um some ap some mp uh, and it's chance and agility based so i do like this set i think it's a really nice set um and i am looking forward to using it is a bit different from kind of your regular sort of going agility or going chance, but I do want to give it a go because then we're able to hit in two elements, which would be quite useful for this specific dungeon. So hopefully that's something we can do next episode. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and sticking around. And let me know if you would want me to pair Vazric up with another companion. You know, give me your thoughts and suggestions into what that companion should be. And I will definitely start the rise to the duo. Thank you so much for watching and take care.